Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. Welcome to another tips and tricks video. If you are new to my channel, I am a part-time online reseller who sells on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. I sell clothing, hard goods, accessories, and I love selling belts. And every once in a while, you get a belt that needs a little bit more TLC. So that's what I'm gonna show you today in this video. I'm just gonna move these back a little bit so I can show you the belt itself. So I got this belt out of my most recent Shop Goodwill belt unboxing. It is an Orvis belt. Someone really, really loved this belt. As you can see, there is um, what we call verdigris or verdigris. It is basically a chemical reaction between the brass and the tanning agents or whatever they use to treat the leather when creating the belt. Unfortunately, this does happen from time to time, especially when things aren't stored properly or the leather isn't cleaned regularly and you get this chemical reaction that gets a gross green gunk on it. So we have it on the front here. We also have it kind of on the back. These rivets look good, but these ones are pretty bad. Very gunky. A little bit on the back here. There's also some up here and even in here. So I have done this once on one other belt. It wasn't a fully leather belt. It was actually more of a suede belt and that one came out okay, but there wasn't any verdigris on the leather itself on that belt. It was just on the brass rivet, so it was pretty easy to clean, but this one kind of involves a little bit more. So I'm going to show you some products that I'm using. I'm gonna be using a mixture of baking soda and white vinegar. This is going to go on the actual leather itself to clean that off. I also have a glove to protect my hand. Unfortunately, I only have one, so we will make do with what I have. I have a little bowl that I could make my baking soda and vinegar mixture and also some Q-tips to scrape some of that gunk off. I have a toothbrush to kind of get into the grooves and stuff. I also have a towel here that is going to protect the table underneath because the baking soda mixture gets kind of messy. Um, so I have that and then I also have just a microfiber cleaning cloth. And then after all of the verdigris is removed, I am going to condition the belt. So I have these leather conditioning wipes. I'm sorry, my ring light is causing such a shadow there. Um, it cleans, conditions, and protects but I also have this stuff, which I haven't been able to use yet. I haven't had anything that like really needed heavy TLC, but this belt might be the first. So we'll see if we need to use this. But anyway, after I clean it, that's when we're going to condition it to make sure that the belt is clean and hopefully will help prevent the verdigree from coming back, at least in the near future. All right, so let's start first on these. For these, I'm just going to take a Q-tip with some of my white vinegar and see how much I can get off with just kind of scraping it like this. I may have to get something a little bit sharper like um, maybe a needle or my Scotty peeler or something that's going to scrape up that stuff. I also read that a dental floss, like uh, the dental cleaning picks might be useful. So. If nothing works, I will go grab one of those. But let me take these out of here and I will pour some vinegar in. I actually hate the smell of vinegar, uh, but it is a great cleaning agent. My mother swears by it and literally cleans everything in her house with vinegar. I unfortunately can't do that just because I can't stand the smell. So um, we're just gonna take our Q-tip, dip it in, and we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. Okay, a lot of the gunk came off already. Yeah, look at that, yuck. Let me grab my cloth over here. Okay, some more came off, so that's good. I'm just using my nail to go up under my cloth so I can go under the rivet itself. And yeah, I'm glad I did that, because look at that. 
All right, I did run and get some dental picks because my nail isn't long enough and it just wasn't doing the job it needed to do. So I think I'm actually just gonna use the end of it and kind of pick around. Try not to scratch the leather, of course, but see how some of that is coming off. And I'm basically just gonna do this until I don't see any more. I think that looks pretty good, a lot better. I mean, look at the comparison of the other one here. All right, next we do the other one. Oops, I didn't mean to do it in that side. That was the dirty side. Yikes, that one was pretty dirty. Pretty gross. And a lot more came off of that. Okay, now I'm gonna use the pick again to kind of get in there. Ew, I got some on my finger, gross. If vertigree is left to its own devices. So basically if, if nothing gets cleaned and nothing gets removed, it can damage the brass. It'll start to eat away at it and then it'll just end up being all rusty and gross. All right, so now we have this little bit over here. I might just clean the whole thing with a Q-tip and vinegar because it probably needs to be cleaned. I mean, somebody really, really loved this belt and I'm hoping to pass it along to somebody else too. All right, that actually came off very easily. All right, we'll just continue to do the rest. I will obviously rotate it when I'm done with it. There's a little vertigree over here and also in this little crevice. Does this move? Oh, it does, okay. It's kind of stuck. All right, just give it a nice rub. And because I was working on this side, I'm gonna rotate this over here and just work on this side a little bit. I did the rest of it, so just need to do over here. This side wasn't as bad, thankfully. All right, that is good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna work on these back here because there is just a tiny bit of vertigree on the back. Use my dental pick again. Yeah, you couldn't really see it until I actually dug it out. Just wanna be really careful with whatever you're using to scrape so that you don't scrape the leather or like, you know, accidentally put a hole in it. And then we'll get the pick out on this one. This one was not as bad. And I did get a little bit off of it. Awesome. All right, it is looking better already. So now we're gonna move on to the hard part, the part that I haven't tried myself yet, but we're gonna try it together. Just kidding, I forgot that there are rivets down here that also need to be cleaned, so let me just do those real quick. This dental pick is actually doing a really good job. <laughs> I did not expect it to work as well as I needed it to. Okay. 
Okay. That one's better. Now we'll do this one. Yuck. Look at the chunks that came off of this one. Woo wee. Yikes. All right, that one looks good. These do have a little bit of green back here, these rivets, but I will clean them at the same time that I'm gonna be cleaning this. And so now we need to get our vinegar and baking soda mix. It doesn't really matter what kind of ratio you use. You basically want it to be the consistency of, they say ketchup. Yes, it will foam, that's just a normal reaction. A little bit of ASMR. <laughs> and then you just mix it until, like I said, it's like a paste. I added a little bit more baking soda. You don't want it to be too thick of a paste, but you do want it to be thick enough so that you can kind of cake it on. You add some more. This is not ketchup consistency. I definitely had too much vinegar in there to begin with. Oh well. All right, I'm gonna say that's good enough. So now what we do, this is gonna be difficult because these little loops can come in and out. So I'm gonna to have to like maneuver these in a spot where I can actually get to the vertigree itself. So let me do that. Okay, I think I did it. So I got all of the pieces that have that green gunk on it. We will do the front later. So we're just going to apply this. Put it over here too. Don't be afraid to slather it on. And then after this, it needs to sit for three to five minutes. And while I'm doing this side, I'm gonna flip over this side and also apply it to the leather up front here. All right, we're gonna let it sit three to five minutes and I'll be back. All right, it has been five minutes. This is what it looks like when it dries. And I gotta say, it smells pretty gross too. So in order to get this stuff off, you're just going to use a cloth that is dampened with just normal water and we just rub it all off like this. And this is why I said you wanted to protect your desk because it does get pretty messy with all of the baking soda. And hopefully this got the verdigris yuckiness off. Now it's gonna kind of be hard to tell because it's still wet and I may not be able to know if the actual green spots are gone because the leather is darker, but once it dries, I'll be able to know for sure. All right, and we'll flip it over and do this side. Oh my gosh, it smells. Okay, this side's a little easier to see because the leather is smoother versus the rougher leather over here or on the back, I mean. So this, I might just have to get a little bit of elbow grease in. Okay, so I scrubbed it off as best as I can, but as you can see, there's still some of the remnants left. So I'm going to be very carefully using this pick to kind of scrape off that stuff. I don't want to damage the leather, but I don't want this stuff to be on it either. So if I just kind of swipe it from the side, it might help.
All right, I don't think the pick did much, so I'm just gonna take my cloth again and kind of give it a really, really good scrub. All right, well, that's as good as I'm gonna get it. I could redo this solution and then wipe it off again, but I'm happy with how it looks. Of course, you know, when it dries, I'll be able to tell if it actually came off or not. Like this, I have no idea, I can't tell at all. So what I'm gonna do before letting this dry is just kind of scrape out this caked on baking soda with my pick and kind of get in the grooves and get all of that out. And then I will leave it overnight to dry and then I will condition it tomorrow. All right, so I cleaned up the belt a little bit better and got rid of most of the baking soda that was kind of caked in the crevices. I think it looks a lot better already. I did try to scrape a little bit more of the verdigris off over here in these spots. And now I'm just going to set it to dry overnight and then I will show you what it looks like tomorrow. All right, so it is now the next day. The belt is fully dry. And I think I did a pretty good job down here. Um, there are definitely some spots that are still there, but I don't know at this point if this is vertigree or just where, but hopefully my leather CPR will help get that off. And then the back did pretty good too. There's still some like darker spots on these little loops, but I mean, there is no more green, so that's good. A little bit of baking soda still on there. So again, I've never used this before. Um, I liked it because it doesn't irritate your skin, so I don't necessarily need to use gloves for it. I mean, you could if you were still sensitive, but I'm not planning on it. So the instructions say to apply liberally using a clean, soft sponge. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not using a sponge because I don't have one. I just have cloths, so that's what we're going to use. Um, I'll just make sure that the leather itself is pretty soaked in this stuff. Allow the leather CPR cleaner and conditioner to melt away dirt and grime and condition the leather for one to two minutes. And then afterwards, we're going to rub away um, with the sponge or the cloth, because that's what I have, to loosen the dirt and then wipe off the excess product and dirt with a clean, soft cloth. So I do have to remove this because like I said, I've never used it before. Oh, that does not look good. and it smells like glue. So this should be super fun. I'm gonna have to do this in two stages because I don't have a long enough table to lay the belt all the way down. So I'm gonna do half of it now, clean it, and then do the other half. So I think I might just kind of do one of these things. All right, kind of looks like glue. It smells like it too, which is interesting. So I do have a cloth that says not to use it, but apparently I'm a rebel. So I'm gonna rub it in. You know what? I feel like the cloth did actually take most of it with it. So um, I apologize, I, I wasn't really prepared for a sponge. So I think I'm just gonna take it and rub it in with my fingers. We'll see how that does since it's not gonna irritate my skin. All right, that's going on a lot better. That's better. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for one to two minutes and I'll be right back. It's been about two minutes, maybe like a minute and a half, but I'm gonna go ahead and start to, it says to rub it in so that you can loosen up all of the dirt and stuff. So we'll just take our already kind of dirty cloth and rub it in. Wow, this made it really soft. Nice. I am really impressed by this stuff. Not only is this belt now super um, flexible, it's no longer stiff. It's got a nice shine to it. It did take care of some of those super dry spots. So let's do the same over here. This side really has some bad scratching on it. 
I am gonna do the finger method again because it seemed to work the best. It just got rid of so many of those scratches just by me doing this. This stuff is fantastic. I will link all of my leather products that I'm using in the description below. Um, I got them all from Amazon, so it's not like you gotta go any place special to get them. This part here might be difficult just because I'm gonna have to move up and down the loop so I can make sure to get all of them covered. All right, and then we're gonna let this sit for one to two minutes as well. One to two minutes is up, and I also did up here near the buckle as well. So now let's wipe off this side. Well, I say it looks a lot better than it was. It does still have some scratching and some wear to the leather, but that's normal in this type of leather, especially on a well-loved belt. I probably will do the CPR treatment one more time just to kind of cover up those dry spots. And I will give you guys an after shot of what it looks like when it's all dry and conditioned, but I am happy with the results so far. Definitely not bad. Well, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope that you learned something or helped you uh, maybe complete something that was in your death pile. Maybe something just really needed a good leather cleaning and you were scared or didn't know how to do it. When I first started reselling, leather cleaning and just leather products really scared me because I didn't know the proper way to treat them. You definitely learn by experience and this was a good project for me to do and to show you as well. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.